the Beretta Model 70S. Let's check it out. Today we're going to take a look at the Beretta Model 70S. Uh, it's in 380 ACP and it's a single stack, single action, full metal steel pistol. Uh, I'll tell you, it's got the right heft, it's got great balance, and it just has that traditional Beretta look. You know, Beretta is the oldest firearm company still in existence. It's been in business over 400 years and there is a lot of tradition that goes into Beretta pistols. Uh, definitely they know their styling. But I'll tell you guys, the functionality of this handgun is excellent as well. Uh, being an older style, again, designed in 1958, uh, it definitely uh, has some old school type technology and some of the controls. But it's still a very compact, great shooting handgun. The Beretta Model 70S, uh, this is in 380 ACP. Uh, they did make this in the 32 ACP and also in 22 long rifle. Uh, these were made from 1958 till 1985 when they were discontinued. This gun did replace though the Beretta M1935, uh, which to me looked a lot more archaic <laughs> than the new design. This is very similar uh, to the Beretta 92 as far as the lines and the way the slides cut. And of course, we do have the open barrel design, which makes this actually more reliable because you, you don't get stove pipes and things like that. Um, and this has really been a good proven design over the years. But one of the problems with this model being a single stack, only holding seven and one, and we're gonna look at the, drop the magazine, and you can see it has a very unusual mag release down here at the bottom of the grip. But it's better than the European mag release down here at the heel. Uh, so we pull it out, we have seven and one, it's a steel magazine, has a small little finger rest, on the magazine and all the magazines that fit this come with that little finger rest. Um, we're going to go ahead and check to make sure the gun is unloaded and it is. Uh, to me this is a lot like just handling a miniature Beretta 92 except that it is single action and that means that the trigger does not actuate the hammer. So you load the pistol by racking the slide and there's a round inserted and then you're ready to fire, and then subsequent shots will be in semi-automatic. Now, while the hammer being in the rear position, you can engage your safety. Uh, there's not really a hammer block. There's no transfer bar. So this should be safe as far as dropping it. It's not going to force the hammer to go forward. But I don't really think that there is any kind of safety, definitely not one in the chamber with the hammer down. Uh, because there is no safety, even half cock. But if you know different, please leave it down in the comments. I did some research and I really couldn't find anything concrete, uh, but definitely you have it back and up. Should be fine, but if that safety gets knocked, um, you know, this could be a problem. And here we have our slide stop. It's a little button. Uh, it was changed to a paddle later on. We can just engage our slide stop this way. Now on the last round, it'll hold open, but it's because of the follower and not the magazine. So I can rack and you know do whatever, but it's not even hit the mag release and it's not gonna release it. It's not until I drop the magazine that it closes. And so at least you get that open with the last round. The serrations are well cut and uh, they grip to your finger even though they have a very low profile here on the slide. Uh, the sights, you can see they're just a black notch. Uh, the front is actually black. I put a little bit of white paint on there just to be able to see it. Uh, but it just makes it black on black. Here's your takedown lever, and we'll take a look at that in just a minute. It's a little bit different, and of course you just have a solid trigger. Uh, the trigger pull was improved quite a bit over the M1935 model. And so let's take a look at this trigger action, and the gun is unloaded. So you have a slight bit of take up, and then a nice break. 
reset right about there. Now we're going to use our Lyman trigger gauge from Brownells to check the trigger pull weight. 5 pounds, 7.3 ounces. 5 pounds, 9.7 ounces. 5 pounds, 5.2 ounces. So a very nice trigger pull weight. Now the Model 70S does have the steel frame. So steel slide, steel frame. Uh, there were some models very similar to this that were made with the aluminum alloy frame. But because this gun is so thin, uh, it belies the weight and it just makes it a very balanced handgun. And even at the range, it's going to make a big difference with felt recoil. The grips are plastic. Uh, they're wraparound grips. Very well finished with the Beretta logo. Uh, to be imported, they had to include a finger rest. And this had to do with the National Firearms Act for pistols under a certain size. And so, you know, it, it still has a really good feel to it. But uh, I really wish that was not there to the point that I ended up buying wood grips for this gun. Now I picked up some walnut wood grips. I think I found these on eBay. They were about $75, but um, the gun was in such good condition and uh, I just wanted to kind of dress it up. Uh, obviously I can go right back to the black grip, but um, which is nice, but I really like that wood grip. Uh, extra magazines typically can be a little difficult to find, uh, but they run about $40 usually um, you know, I think Triple K makes some and a couple of other different companies. But, um, you know, again, this is kind of a, a collector piece. And, uh, but there are things available out there for the Model 70S. Now, I brought in my Beretta Model 84. Uh, this is a 380 as well. I'm going to double check to make sure the gun is unloaded, the magazine's out. Uh, the one thing about this gun is there's a number of different features that are different. First off, it is a double action. So when I pull the trigger, the hammer is actuated. Uh, it is double single action, so if the hammer's back, of course, it's in single action mode. I can pull the trigger. Uh, then also, you know, you have your standard frame safety. Uh, here we have a mag release that's more of the paddle. And then you can see it's a definite departure here on the takedown lever, which I really like. Um, and then, of course, the mag release is up here. Now, this did come with wood grips, <laughs> and I switched them to the black grip. So, you know, I guess I can't make up my mind, but, you know, I really like the look of this black grip. The wood grips I had had a lot of little dings and things in it. But I retained them because I think it really makes the gun look pretty cool. And this actually carries 13 plus 1. So this is a double stack. And, uh, and you can see I have the gun loaded. I do keep this gun for self-defense. Uh, and so this is one that I really like this little pistol. The Model 84 began to be produced in 1976 and is still currently being produced by Beretta. But these are not, I think, being imported today uh, into the U.S. One of the things about these two pistols, too, is they are in 380. And because of some of the really small micro 380s, like the Ruger LCP that holds six rounds and it is about half this size, it's one of the reasons why they stopped making pistols like this and even the uh, double stack. So these are really classic firearms and there's a lot of history behind them. But uh, they have been surpassed by a lot of the new models. Another big difference between these two pistols is we have a steel frame on the Model 70S. We have an aluminum alloy frame on the Model 84. And this is called the Cheetah. Weight on the Model 70S, 1 pound, 7.6 ounces. It's about seven inches in length. It's four and a half inches in height. It's really thin, just under an inch. Of course, if you include the uh, thumb rest, it's a little bit longer. And the barrel is three and a half inches. Now we're gonna be trying some different type ammo. A friend of mine brought over some Phoenix ammunition. Uh, this is just Full Metal Jacket 100 grain 380. And uh, just thought it was a nice gift. And so I'm gonna test this out along with some American Eagle and some older HPR that I had. It's a very smooth shooting handgun. Uh, it is in 3D ACP. One of the things that happened to me early on was the safety engaged a couple of times, and so I just kept my thumb over the safety. Then I started shooting it without the safety uh, being held down, and it still functioned fine. I don't know if it was just me getting used to it or just getting try, trying to get a really high grip on the handgun, which is the way I typically shoot, but it's something to be mindful of. Uh, also, one thing about the magazines is, yes, they do hold the slide open, 
but it's because of the follower. And you can't use this as a release. You're, this is definitely a slide stop. Uh, so when you drop your magazine, it drops the slide. And so again, it's only in the follower. I only had one malfunction. Uh, it was just out of nowhere. I mean, we shot about 300 rounds through it without any problems, but that one round, uh, I think it was some of the older HPR that I had laying around. Uh, but it is single action, um, and so, you know, it's a little bit different. There's a different battery of arms that go with this, and as for concealed carry, you know, sometimes people like just to carry an old traditional handgun as their concealed carry. Um, and a lot of times, guys, we just find them somewhere, you know, maybe our grandfather or our father had one and passed it down, uh, and so it's just great to bring one of these little excellently made handguns back out to the range. We're going to disassemble the firearm. We're going to drop our magazine. Again, double check, make sure the gun is unloaded. Right here on the side, we have a little lever, and so there's a notch corresponding in the slide. So we're just gonna bring it back, take that lever and turn it like this. It allows the slide to slide over that little lever, and then it pulls loose. Recoil spring, guide rod, it is steel, and the barrel does come out the top, <laughs> which is a little different. But really overall, it's very simple to disassemble the firearm, and you can see it's a very simple design inside, the slide, very simple. Uh, and this is where I'm not seeing a, a firing pin block. So there is a pin that runs through here, but I think that just retains the firing pin. A more elegant weapon during a more civilized time. <laughs> Reassembly, we're gonna place our barrel in and we're gonna take it from the top, bring in our recoil spring and guide rod. And then we're gonna bring our slide back over and then re-engage our takedown lever. Make sure that you get this takedown lever with that little lever facing backward. If you don't, it's not gonna engage the block that holds the barrel and slide into place. Now, from what I understand, these were made with a magazine safety. Uh, and so that means if you drop the magazine, the gun will not fire. That is not the case with this pistol. I don't know if it's been disengaged or not. But uh, that's one thing that uh, you will find is that when you have this magazine out, you will not be able to fire the handgun. But again, this one's working. Now, as far as the price goes, it just is according to the condition of the firearm. Uh, I paid $375 for this particular handgun from a good friend of mine, and it did come with an extra magazine, which is key. So it came with three magazines. Uh, the magazines typically can run about $40, 37 to $40 a piece. Uh, and you'll need to see if you can find them. Typically, Gun Broker is a good source, and I think Triple K makes them. But, uh, you know, it's just a great little firearm. It is Beretta quality and uh, a really nice gun to add to the collection. One thing about these old school pistols is they have a lot of soul to them. You guys, this video was brought to you in part by BattleBox. And if you've been on my Sensible Prepper channel, and I've said this a number of times, BattleBox is to me the best subscription service for tactical and shooting and you know prepping type gear, survival gear. They have some of the best quality items of any subscription box that I've seen. Uh, they have four different tiers and the top tier which is the Pro Plus Knife of the Month Club, typically the knife is as much as the box altogether with all the items and that is at a good price. So BattleBox Check them out. Uh, you get a 10% discount with the first subscription service using Such in the coupon code. And I'll have my latest battle box opening right here annotated. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic. And, the, uh, and it weighs 1.76 ounces. Now reassembly, of course, just bring in your barrel. Okay. Now reassembly. We'll go ahead and make sure that the gun, the hammer's in the rear position. You can 
engage the safety. Oops. And don't carry one of these unless you got the moxie. 